Hey guys, just waiting at a ferry terminal here. Uh, I'm headed to Vancouver Island to deliver some emergency supplies. Um, I'm going to spend a couple days there and take some videos and pictures of some of the areas, so I'll share that with you guys. Um, it looks like they're starting to board some foot passengers now, so I think I'll be on next. And as you, some of you guys know, I started a trucking company um, delivering random stuff. It's been really good so far. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now and I just wanted to share a few things with you guys about the future of my YouTube channel and some of the videos I'll be making coming up as well as I'll give you guys a little a few business tips I've um, started a couple businesses now and just wanted to tell you guys like if you're planning on starting your own business or thinking about it um, some of the things that you should be aware of and some of the benefits you can reap from it um, it's definitely rewarding in some ways if you're motivated it's a lot of work sometimes but um, it's definitely worth it. So, talk to you guys about that and I'll show you some of the areas here. So this is just looking out the window at the ferry terminal. Um, we haven't started moving yet, but really nice. It's a nice time of day where the sun is sort of giving off those yellow hues on everything it hits. Um, so it's pretty low in the sky. Looks nice. So it's super cold out here, but it's pretty beautiful. You can see the sun setting over there. Looks totally awesome. Um, over that way is Vancouver. So we're getting quite a ways away from it now. Yeah, pretty sweet. All right. So here's the resort here. Crown Isle Resort. Let's check this out. Ah, they got it nicely decorated. Got some Christmas stuff up. That's pretty cool. matter of whether I'm gonna find parking with this giant truck. just arrived they did a pretty nice job here it's all decorated up for Christmas Wow that's crazy So I arrived at the hotel here. All in all, it's pretty epic. There's a big kitchen, um, nice, uh, nice bathroom with pretty epic shower. It's got all these jets and everything. Um, and then the bedroom suite, like, uh, so a king size bed, that'll be awesome. It's got a fireplace and a big TV. Um, got this nice jacuzzi tub that actually has this starlit ceiling thing that you can turn on and off. Uh, and it's got hot air blowing out of it. So that is epic. I'm definitely going to be using this thing. Man, I overdid it in the jacuzzi. I made it way too hot and then I got out and I felt like passing out and puke and I was just lying on the floor for like 15 minutes. You can see my face is still pretty red. Whew, I'm still sweating a bit. I need some cold air. But uh, I'm doing better now. That was hilarious. Just sitting here waiting for the window to defog, or defrost. Minus four degrees Celsius right now. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. To all my US viewers. Um, but if you ever get the chance to come to Canada, go to a place called Tim Hortons. They have this farmer's breakfast wrap. It is so good. Can't really see it very well, but it's got a hash brown, egg, cheese, um, <clears throat> some kind of sauce and bacon delicious Port Hardy um, kind of on the north end of Vancouver Island sort of as far up as you can go almost um, so just around the corner of this sort of thing goes out to the Pacific Ocean around that corner it's quite nice really serene out here it's kind of a small town too so it's just very quiet. Oh, 
Not bad, eh? These rock formations are neat. I don't know if this is man-made or natural, but... Looks kind of like either sandstone or maybe really old concrete. It's a really nice day. It's cold but beautiful. I guess this is the actual port. It's pretty cool. So all these little fishing boats. It's a nice quiet little area. Look at this beautiful spot. It's amazing. This is the absolute ideal utopia for trout. Basically, anything that falls off that cliff goes into the deep water, they grab it. Anything that comes down that stream goes into the deep water and they grab it. Beautiful. So I said I was going to talk to you guys a little bit about starting businesses, if you're planning on doing something like that. Um, so a couple of the things you want to watch out for at the beginning when you're sort of in the planning stage. Take maybe a year to plan it um, if you can. You know, write things down. Make sure you're not overcome with debt on things like um, car payments and stuff like that. Uh, before you jump in and do it because the last thing you want to do is leave your regular full-time job where you're being able to make these payments and then jumping into a business where you may not get a steady paycheck every month. So at the beginning you want to keep your overhead as low as possible if you can. Um, ways to do this are if it's at all possible, can't stress this enough, try to start your business from home if you're able to because it's difficult if you're renting a shop and say you're paying a couple thousand dollars a month or renting a storefront somewhere, which can be even more expensive, especially in a, a high traffic area. Um, it's hard to get started unless you have a huge chunk of money just to pay your bills or to um, just make things work for the first little bit until you actually get more clientele. Um, develop clientele before you actually start and open your business if you can. Get people on board that will use your services um, and that you know you can trust them to uh, to actually follow through with um, ordering from you or, or using whatever service you're doing. Um, I made the mistake once of I was already working full time. I was doing firefighting in the evenings like at night and stuff. I would get called out, paged out on fire calls. Um, and then I also started uh, a welding shop. Um, some of you probably saw a video about that about a year ago. And it got to the point where I was spending so much time working full time during the day than trying to basically work again full time in the evenings and then not getting any sleep at night. So it just wasn't practical anymore. Plus I was paying quite a bit for the shop rental. So immediately the overhead, when you have a shop or something like that, uh, it's not just the the rental or the lease payment. It's also the hydro and the like the electricity things that come with that. So there's quite a few expenses, especially advertising things like that. So don't get yourself overwhelmed with monthly payments. That was also a mistake I made with that business. Um, so yeah. So the key things are try to start it at home if possible. Um, use your talents if. You're starting a business, do something that you know, something that you've perhaps worked in that industry for a few years so that you know the ins and outs of it. It's very difficult to jump into something that you know nothing about. Um, so I don't suggest taking a hundred thousand dollars and just putting it into uh, deciding to start a business that you've never done anything with. Definitely need to do research first and something that you're passionate about because you need to be motivated about it and passionate about whatever you're actually trying to do um, because many businesses fail when people just think, oh, I have this money, I'm going to start this business. I've never done anything to do with this before, so I'm just going to try it. Um, yeah, definitely know your stuff first before you do that. Um, and also, if you're working full time um, and you're able to, 
transition yourself into the business, if you jump ship right away from your regular job and you have bills and payments, mortgage, things like that, it's going to be very difficult to keep up with that when you're also trying to keep up with all the expenses that come up with the business every month. So if you have, if you live in an area where say for, for hairdressing or something, you can set up a salon in your house somewhere, or if you're a woodworker, set up a little shop in your house and start selling some products first and trying them out. Um, another thing you don't want to do is just basically put a whole bunch of money into something that like a product that you're developing that you're not sure if it's actually going to sell. If you can try to make them in small quantities first, make sure you have the buyers. Um, I did this with a product that I made. It's a, a digging tool for metal detecting and gardening and stuff like that. It's called the Viking digger, the ironclad Viking digger. You can look it up if you want. Um, it's made of stainless steel. It's basically like a serrated shovel, but it's really durable. So it's like a garden spade that won't bend back or break on you. Um, and I tried that out just, I made a few, I think I made maybe 10 at first and I just did them myself. Um, they weren't refined completely yet. I hadn't uh, completely um, mastered the product yet, but I thought I'll put them out there, put them on a few various things, set up a website, also put them on eBay um, and they sold really well right away. So then I made a double sized batch. So I made 20 of them and then I started making more and more and now I've sold thousands of them and um, you just have to make sure that you're actually going to get the buyers. Um, sometimes you'll just know if a product is really good, but definitely, um, yeah, you got to make sure that it's, it's going to be viable in the market. Um, so those are some tips. If you're starting out, I'll give you, I'll give you some more tips, but, um, definitely keep those things in mind. Um, when, when you're starting a business, you definitely want to be careful how much you're putting out because it will add up really quickly. Like if you have $10,000 sitting there, depending on the type of business you're starting, that can go very quick. A hundred thousand can go very quick if it's, you know, a more cost, um, like something that costs a bit more to start. So yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. And, um, uh, another thing is, uh, the YouTube channel, the Iron Kiwi, I'm going to be doing a few different things, sort of some comedy stuff that you guys might find funny or interesting. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing, uh, uh, some more build videos. So there'll be a bit of a mixture coming up. Um, I'm going to build a giant anvil, a hollow one this time, but just, it's more of a decoration thing and, uh, more of like a sculpture piece, but it's going to be quite large and, and I'm looking forward to starting that. So I will show that to you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching. And by the way, subscribing is very important. I just noticed that 0.7 of my views on all my videos are coming from my subscribers. So that means that the other, you know, 99% or whatever is actually just people stumbling across the videos. So if you are watching this, please subscribe. Check that out right below. There's a button, subscribe. Only takes one click, helps me out a lot, and I can uh, keep making more videos for you guys. Um, I'll also do a video on different ways you can make money on the side that don't take a lot of time because if you can get yourself some passive income, it's really important. Um, it helps you out a lot and you, it, it requires very little hours, but you can reap a huge benefit from that. Um, and the nice thing about starting your own business, if you are doing that, is that um, it's hard work and sometimes it takes a lot of hours, but um, in the long run, you can be a little more flexible with your hours and you, yeah, you don't constantly have someone telling you how you're going to run things because you, you, have, you do it, but you do have to be responsible about it. So anyways, thank you very much for watching The Iron Kiwi, and I will talk to you soon.